Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com. It's been about a year since Microsoft killed the Kin, and of course, Kin was the result of the Danger acquisition. Danger is the company uh, that made the Sidekick. And we're going to talk about why Kin failed. We're going to take a look back at the software and see what was interesting about it and what really caused the demise of the device. Uh, so let's get to it. <laughs> Now, of course, there were two different kins, kin 1 and kin 2. Uh, this is the kin 2. This is the higher end version that has the keyboard, the higher resolution display. And it came in really, really interesting packaging. Uh, one of the problems with the kin was that it was overpriced. Uh, the data plan was as expensive as a smartphone. Um, so most people said, why would I get sort of a toned down smartphone when I can just get a full out smartphone? And back a year ago, there were some really great droids on Verizon. This was a Verizon exclusive. So here we go. It's supposed to actually open up like so. And there is the Kin 2. It's already turned on. So we're going to talk about the device. Now, the thing about Kin is that Microsoft was trying to go after the very social networking friendly crowd, the people that were constantly connected to Facebook, uh, the people that cared a lot about text messaging and Twitter and all of the social networks. The problem is that at the same time, uh, smartphones could do the same thing, plus a whole lot more. The Kin had a lot of limitations. It didn't have a third party app story. Uh, it was slow. The hardware was limited. So people just went for full out smartphones. Okay, so here's the unlock screen. And this is all, by the way, based on Windows Phone 7. So of course we see a lot of similarities. And here we are, and we're gonna zoom in on the device a little bit. And let's go into uh, the, the portrait orientation. Now we've got a few components here, and it's not working exactly right. I think it's because they shut down the Kin service. But we've got three home screen panels, one, two, three. We are in the center right now, which is your social feed. There should be pictures right now, and this is streaming in from Facebook and Twitter. So the idea, and this is called the loop, by the way, is that your loop would show you what's going on in the social networking world. You can keep up to date. If you swipe to the left, you get your favorite people, quick way to dial somebody. This is a phone after all. And if you swipe to the left, this is where you go for applications to uh, jump into the browser, use your email client, and so on and so forth. We also have this really interesting icon along the bottom. This is called the Kin Spot. And this is kind of a paradigm uh, that made it easy to share things. So let's say you want to share your contact information. So you bring this down here to the spot. And you can put anything in there that you want to share, and you can determine where you want it to be shared to. Uh, and then you would hit upload, and it would go to your desired social network. So kind of a cool idea. Again, people didn't really uh, have the need to have such a feature on a phone. If you want to share something in Android, for example, you hit the share button, and everything is taken care of for you. So again, we have the social feed here, which is quite nice. Now, the Kin 2 had a slide-out keyboard. Pretty good slide-out keyboard. It looks a little bit funny, but it was actually actually very usable. Now in terms of other hardware, we've got a smallish screen, we've kind of got a pebble-like design, uh, a good camera on the back, and a dedicated camera key kind of awkwardly placed towards the, the tilted part of the kin. I always thought this was funny. Look how many names there are back here. Four different names. Sharp, one, Windows Phone 2, Verizon 3, and Kin 4. So many different brands associated with the Kin. It's just kind of overwhelming if you ever turned, turned over the phone and took a look at the back. So we're going to flip back to the front here and turn the device back on. Let's check out the web browser and see how it was. Uh, again, this is based on Windows Phone 7 software, kind of an earlier version. So we'll jump into the browser. No flash support or anything like that. We can jump into landscape orientation. And we can pull down from the top here to get our tabs. You can slide these tabs into the spot to share a website. You can flick back up to get this stuff to go away. So let's go to the desktop version of Pocket Now and see what the browser's like. It had a slow processor, a single core processor uh, in the Kin, which with not much RAM, it wasn't intended to be really a powerful device. And here we're, we're loading here. You can see we're on Wi-Fi and uh, over Verizon. And so here comes the desktop version of Pocket Now loading on the Kin 2. And by the way, for multitasking, you always had this button in the bottom left corner that said Recent. It brought up four tiles, and from there you could jump to another application. So here it is. It's loading on the screen. You can swipe around. Um, it hasn't finished loading yet. So you know, a little bit choppy and getting some, some checkerboards. It has multi-touch, although the screen is kind of small, and so it makes it a little bit imprecise to, to zoom in with the pinch feature there. 
So not really a good web browser. The kitten couldn't really do web browsing that well. OK, back here on the application list, and it says apps in the upper left corner there, we can jump into camera. And by the way, Kin Studio was a really cool add-on for the Kin. Uh, what it let you do is manage all of your text messages and contacts and your pictures right from the cloud from any web browser. It even had this cool timeline view that lets you go back in time. It's kind of like HTCSense.com. A lot of the manufacturers are doing this now. They're connecting uh, the phone with a web portal. So right now, we just jumped back into the browser, it looks like. So we're going to go back again to the screen. So we can search. We can jump into settings. And everything was kind of slow. You got a splash screen, and then the settings would load. And from here, you can change the themes. Not that much customizability in terms of how you can change uh, the look and feel. You just had a variety of color schemes. And you could, you'd have to restart your phone in order to apply one of them in particular. Let's go back again. Music and more. This would actually work with Zune. It was the first Windows phone uh, to work with Zune, which of course is a pretty cool music subscription service. You pay 15 bucks a month, you get unlimited music downloads, kind of like Spotify actually. And you'd log in with your Zune Pass. You could also download movies and that sort of thing, just like you can do now with Windows Phone 7. So really good multimedia integration with the Kin. See what else we have here that we can talk about. The email app was, was good enough. It wasn't anything amazing. We've got a simple alarm feed reader. Again, no third-party apps, nothing much uh, that you can do beyond the basics. I mean, it was basically a feature phone trying to be a smartphone. Or another way you could look at it is a smartphone uh, that was trying to be a feature phone. But they missed the pricing. They missed the execution. It was just bad timing at a time when smartphones were becoming very affordable and the people that they were targeting, kind of the youthful crowd, were aspiring to get smartphones. And they got them because they, are, they were inexpensive. And the data plan was the same cost as on the Kin. So some fatal errors there. That is why the Kin didn't really make it. Interesting idea, bad timing, and, 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 a, and a not ideal execution. So do you remember the Kin? If so, let us know in the comments. If you had a Kin, we want to hear from you. If you still use a Kin, that would be pretty cool uh, for you to tell us what you think about the Kin after using it for a while. They closed the Kin Studio, so there's not much functionality left with this device. Well, the word on the street is that they didn't sell many of these at all. So it's very unlikely that anyone watching this video actually has one. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and thanks for watching. That's it for now.